Hi, this is Susan Wilson with History Tidbits, cool things you probably didn't know. We are standing at the lower portion of Boston Common, founded in 16, uh, 1634, only four years after the town of Boston was settled. Um, this is an active place to this day. In the early days, it had all kinds of practical purposes. Today, like rug beating and grazing cows and military drills and all that type of thing, but today it is really a park and it has been such since the middle of the 19th century. There are all kinds of things happening at this particular end of the Boston Common. You'll see behind me the very popular carousel. If you go beyond that there's the frog pond where kids can wade in the summer and uh, skate in the winter. And if you keep on going you'll see the garage because uh, in the uh, 20th century they added an entire garage beneath this which is convenient parking for all of Boston. But this is my favorite part, because down here is Charles Street, which is the separation between these two major parklands in downtown Boston. We have the common here, and then we have the public garden. What many people don't know is this is the last edge of Boston's original land. Much of Boston is made land because people kept moving in and moving in, and they needed to expand, and so they brought in turf first from the tops of the mountains in the middle of town and then from out of town and they filled in this area. Uh, and this was a major project. It was the big dig of the 19th century. So starting with Charles Street here and from there on through what's called the Back Bay is all made land, um, which some people call landfill, uh, but my friend Nancy Seashell says has to be called made land. Um, anyway, what happened was the Charles River which now separates Boston from Cambridge, in fact it's always separated Boston from Cambridge, was a tidal river before there were uh, locks, etc. And so during high tide, the water would come up right to here, roughly where Charles Street is. And so that whole area would be underground. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, um, just before the American Revolution began, um, His Majesty George III really wanted to quell any possibility of revolution. So he had His Majesty's troops come in here and the regulars were camped out in tents all over this area of the common. And one of the reasons for being here is they could march back into the main part of town to try to quell anything happening there. But if there were some kind of emergency that required they go someplace, they would have small boats down here on the edge of the Charles that they could pop into and then cross over to Cambridge and deal with any problems over in Cambridge, because Cambridge has always created problems. Anyway, so um, April 18th, 1775, you probably know the one if by land, two if by sea, the famous signal that was arranged and then given to Paul Revere and a variety of other writers to ride out into the countryside, telling them that the British regulars were coming. Now, why were they coming? They were camped out here, but the colonists had decided it was much safer to keep their stores of ammunition, things they would need if a revolution happened, way out in the area of Lexington and Concord. But the secret got out. They flashed two lights in the Old North Church, the belfry of the Old North Church, saying by sea. It wasn't really a sea. It was the Charles River. So the regulars were here. In the, in the dark of night, they got into their boats, crossed over and then went to Cambridge and proceeded to march towards Lexington and Concord after that. So this is the famous by sea. Between the 1850s and the 1890s, this was again the big dig, the, a massive landfill project, um, creating land and uh, it is the most organized, most perpendicular and straight section of town because it was created that way. It was, it was patterned after the Parisian boulevards and uh, so they laid it out with a broad boulevard down the middle, Commonwealth Ave, and perpendicular streets that we call today the alphabet streets, um, starting with Arlington, Berkeley, Clarendon, and so on. They go on down, very, very organized, and a gorgeous way to walk. But again, this used to be all underwater. That is your history tidbit for the day.